the Szechuanese pantry, a dizzying array of unfamiliar ingredients, illegible labels, and often the hardest part about getting into Szechuan cuisine. But have no fear, for this first episode of Szechuan School will be your guru and spiritual guide to achieving larder enlightenment. Although I am a passionate consumer of Szechuan food, I do not speak any Chinese dialects. In fact, I am about to ruthlessly butcher a small village of Chinese words in this video, like a high school level foreign language Genghis Khan. I am so sorry, I promise you I am trying my best. Now let's actually get started. Whew, this is the content you clicked on this link to see, a slow boring pan shot of generic kitchen staples. Chances are you already have most of this stuff laying around in your pantry, so I'm just going to rattle them off real quick and then we're going to move on to the fun stuff. First up you're going to need some salt, my preferred brand is Diamond Crystal Kosher, a neutral cooking oil, white sugar, potato starch or corn starch if you already have that, all-purpose flour, and some light brown sugar. Now we're going to cover dry goods and spices, starting with dried chilies. These three chilies are the ones you're going to use the most when you're making Szechuan food. Since the Facing Heaven chili has the most versatility, I'd recommend buying that one first. It strikes a good balance of fruity, dried chili flavors with a kick of medium heat, which makes it the perfect choice for stir fries, Szechuan hot oil, and just general use in your kitchen. The other two chilies will be covered in my advanced pantry video, which is linked in the description below. Now, stepping up to the plate, batting, clean up the heavy hitter of Szechuan cuisine, the Szechuan peppercorn. So if you've never had a Szechuan peppercorn before, I guarantee it's going to blow your mind the first time you try it. It has this sort of citrusy flavor, but the main attraction is the paresthesia caused by the hydroxyalfusantral molecule upon consumption or uh, it makes your mouth tingle and go a little numb when you eat it. Most of the Szechuan peppercorns you find are absolute garbage, so I'm gonna put a link to a good provider in the description. And finally, I wanna talk to you about spices. Now listen, I could give you a whole grocery list of spices to pick up, but I think the most important two are star anise and cinnamon sticks. Star anise, which is actually a fruit, believe it or not, has a great licorice -y flavor and is one of my all-time favorite spices to work with. And cinnamon sticks, well, you know what a cinnamon stick is. Blah, 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 learn about the other spices in my advanced video, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm gonna cover wet goods? Well, that can't be right. Whatever the opposite of a dry good is. Wet goods, we're gonna talk about wet goods. First up, we've got light and dark soy sauce. So I kind of buy soy sauce how most people buy olive oil. I have a cheaper brand that I buy in bulk for general use. I like Pearl River and I keep a premium soy sauce on hand for when it's the real star of the dish. This one's from the Japanese pantry. Dark soy sauce is used in small amounts, typically for color or for adding base notes to a dish. Next up we've got sesame oil, which loses a lot, loses a lot, loses a lot of its luster when heated. So it's typically used when finishing a dish. Just bear in mind, sesame oil is a little bit more prone to going rancid than your typical oil, so you want to buy it in small amounts and keep it in the fridge. And while we're on the topic of sesame, let's talk about sesame paste. So Chinese sesame paste is pretty similar to tahini, which you may be familiar with, but the seeds are toasted first, so it gets a little bit of a rounder and more nuttier taste. You can either pick up some Chinese sesame paste, sub tahini if you already have it, or you can make your own super easily following my recipe in the description below. This next ingredient is an integral part of Szechuan cuisine. It's a fermented fava and chili bean paste called Daobanjing. The best quality stuff comes from a town called Pihian and will be labeled as such. This paste provides a funky and umami backbone to a lot of traditional Szechuan dishes, like Mapo Tofu. All right guys, stick with me, only two more to go and then I release you to go on your shopping spree. To avoid any confusion, I'm going to call this type of wine Shashing Wine throughout my Szechuan School series. However, that's not entirely accurate. The wines labeled Shaoxing wine in western grocery stores are actually usually a type of cooking wine called Liaojiu, which is cheaper, salted, and of lower quality than actual Shaoxing wine. Take some extra time to read the labels when you're purchasing this stuff. Brands that have no salt added and are labeled Huadiao are generally better quality, but honestly, it can be kind of a crapshoot sometimes. In my local market, I've come to like these two brands. And last but not least, we have Chinkiang vinegar, which is sort of the Chinese equivalent of balsamic vinegar. It has a really fruity, complex flavor profile that blew my mind the first time I tried it. And that's a wrap. With this culinary arsenal now at your disposal, you're going to be able to take on most of the dishes in Szechuan School. In the next episodes, we're going to cover three simple sauces that will transform your Szechuan cooking. 
They bring such complex and delicious flavors to a dish that it almost feels like you're cheating. So please subscribe to stay tuned for that, and more importantly, to give me a hit of that sweet, sweet dopamine. I'll see you next time on Crash Course Kitchen. Crash Course, Crash Course Kitchen.